In Revelation chapter 1, when uh, John uh, heard the voice that he turned to, he looked to see the voice that, uh, that he heard, and he saw the resurrected Christ, the exalted Christ. This is the, the Christ that he uh, spent those three years with. He was very familiar, in fact, so familiar that he was um, not only of the 12, but of the three. And there were certain privileges that those three had that the 12 didn't have. And in fact, among the three, he was like the chief of the, of the three. That uh, the night of the, of the, the supper that Jesus was making known that one of you, Peter tapped John's shoulder and said, ask who it is. And so this is the John, the beloved, that had, it actually was closer than, than, closer than the closest of the close. And when John turned to, to see, oh, he saw more of Christ here in Revelation chapter 1 than he had ever seen. And, he, and he, he already had seen a lot. He knew a lot. But, when, but he was veiled. It was that the, in his, in his fle- his, Jesus' flesh was a veil. And on the Mount of Transfiguration, he, he uh, allowed uh, some of it to come out. Yeah. You know, his clothes became white and his countenance shone. And, and a little, it was like a little bit of it le- leaked out. And then Jesus said, don't, don't tell anybody about this until... I'm raised again from the dead. But here in Revelation chapter 1, this was not veiled, and it was not leaked. This was, this was full. This was the full exalted Christ that uh, I, I have a feeling that even wor- words uh, didn't contain the fullness of it. John, what John wrote, of course, is inspired. I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay or discredit anything that's said. But there were, Paul said, things that he saw in the heavenly places that were not lawful to be uttered. And it's not like the angel said, hey, make sure you don't say this. I think not lawful means there, there weren't words to contain. There, this can't be. Unlawful is that it can't be communicated. In Revelation 1.16, John noted this about when he turned to see the voice. Now, we, we, normally we listen, but he turned to see a voice. It was that, it was that notable. And John already had an inclination to listen. We know that. To listen to the words of Christ. But when he turned to to see, one of the things he noted, he wrote in verse 16, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Now John had already had experience with this sword. But he saw saw it here in a light that that he hadn't seen before. He was able to articulate it because now it's not veiled. There's nothing about Jesus veiled here. And John was caught up, you know, in, in the Spirit. He was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and he, and he received this vision that was actually delivered to him by the angel. And so he saw more than he'd, than he'd ever seen. He had, he had already had experience with this sword, this sharp two-edged sword that come out of, John, out of Jesus' mouth. But now he saw that he, was, he had that Peter experience. This is that. I could imagine the, the, the flood of of words that Jesus said that came back into John's mind when he saw the sharp two-edged sword he was able to say this is I remember that sword I it, it must have been such a, such an exhilarating uh, experience for John to turn and what he saw but this um, just a few thoughts I wanted to share as we come to this table about the the sharp sword two-edged sword that comes out of Jesus's mouth one is that, of course, this is his word. It comes out of his mouth. It's what he says. When he, when he speaks, it's like a sword. Mm-hmm. And secondly, it's two-edged. And so he speaks this, when he speaks this word in a mixed multitude, some people die because of it and other people live because of it. It's a two-edged sword. Uh-huh. And, of course, it's sharp. Mm-hmm. And so it's not... It, it's not um, it's not mutilating; it's piercing. Yeah, right. And there's a there's a di- there's a difference between piercing words and heavy words. You know, heavy. I I know I'm. I share this burden with everyone who speaks in any any public capacity. That I I often feel like my words are heavy. Like I've just they're not they're not sharp enough. It's like I could have. 
I, I wanted to I wanted to say that more effectively. I wanted I wanted it to be sharper. You you know what I mean. Yeah. But G, Jesus doesn't. He's never burdened with that. His but his his words are a sharp two edged sword, yeah. and they they divide asunder like Hebrews four says it. His word is sharper than any two edged sword. Here's some examples of this. Of course, in chapters two and three of Revelation, he's wielding this sword. This two-edged sword in the seven messages that were delivered to the seven churches, he laid bare the seven churches with the sword. He just he cut through all pretense, if there was. He cut through all uh, uh, lies, if there was. He he cut he cut through silence, if there was. Whatever it was, he cut it open and, and laid it bare. And so, in these churches, when he spoke to these churches, if they were tolerant of of uh, False prophets, he laid it open for everybody to see. If they were if they were patient, enduring, and faithful, he laid it open for everybody to see. See whether he his word opened it, it pierced, it divided, it revealed, and for what it was, whether they were uh, uh, faithful in Philadelphia or whether they were. Uh, liars and hard in Laodicea. Whatever the condition was, the sharp sword opened it up. Amen. It's two-edged and it's sharp. It's a, it's it's effective. There isn't there isn't anything that can that can deflect the aim of the two-edged sword. There isn't anything that can that can frustrate the uh, uh, the penetration of this two-edged sword. When Jesus speaks, it penetrates. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, that's why that's why worldly people don't want to know. They don't want to hear what he what Jesus has to say because it penetrates. Uh-huh. It, it 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 convicts. It it'll make you uncomfortable. But the, it, it, see, it only makes you uncomfortable in the flesh. As you draw near, well, then it's it's not discomforting anymore. It's actually comfortable. Yes. It's actually comforting. You see, it's too it's two edged. He uh, this sharp two edged sword is what. Uh, Paul, uh, Saul of Tarsus met on that road to Damascus. And it was, see, he, he laid things open to Saul there that day that Saul didn't know. He was, he was zealous, but not according to knowledge. He was actually fighting against the one whom God had anointed when he thought he was actually doing God's service. But Jesus, in the, with this sharp two-edged sword, he said, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Now, we don't, we don't know a lot of details about this, but there was a struggle inside of Saul of Tarsus. There was something, something that was uncomfortable. He was kicking against the pricks. Yeah. Maybe there was something in those people that he was uh, imprisoning, something in them that made Paul think second. Like, maybe he didn't sleep very well that night. Something that he heard, he thought, there, there's more to this than, I don't know, I'm just surmising here. There was more to it than what Saul of Tarsus knew. And Jesus laid this open. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Maybe Paul couldn't, maybe Saul couldn't put his finger on it. But it was something that bothered him. And the sharp two-edged sword laid it open. He says, why do you persecute me? That was a revelation to Saul. He he laid, laid it open with this sharp two-edged sword. What a, what a ministry this sword has. And this sword is not just for, convi- not just for conversion. Because this is the sword he wielded to these seven churches. And not all seven churches need, needed conversion. Not all seven churches even needed repentance. There were two of the churches that Jesus had nothing bad to say. But it was still the sharp two-edged sword. He discovered when he was, even in this world, he used this sharp two-edged sword. He discovered the Jewish leaders, and he said, you're blind. Yeah. Oh, imagine what this sounded like to the common people. Well, there were pro- probably people uh, backing up into the corner of the room if they were in a room when he said that, or walking out the door. But, ooh, he, these were the authorities, and Jesus, he, you blind leaders of the blind, you're both going to fall into the pit. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're actually thieves. You're, rob- you're not taking you're not, you're not actually receiving tithes. You're robbing widows' houses. What was that but the sharp two-edged sword lay, just laying open these and discovering these, the, the actual motives of these religious people? You're, 
you're when you traverse land and sea, you're actually making people sons of hell. You're not converting them to, to not to the God of Israel. He's laying open so that um, he's discovering the sword. The sword of his mouth is what came down on Pentecost. He said, "Men and brethren, what must we do?" Boy, they they weren't they weren't saying they weren't trying to uh, evade the uh, the responsibility then, were they? What shall what shall we do? They is like the sword penned them. Yeah, yeah. It had them. What shall we do? That's this sharp two-edged sword. And every one of us, in according to our own uh, faith and our own experience, we've been there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. Where uh, maybe your own conscience said to you, "Thou art the man." Yeah. Maybe you couldn't hear your conscience, and so God sent a brother edged. Some some people left off following Jesus because of this sword, and some people left off everything else to follow him because of this sword. Mm -hmm. See, so there's there's a different view of the two edges. Some people said, this is a hard saying. What were they actually saying? Oh, this is a sharp sword, Mm. and I don't like its penetration. That the apostles, they said, this is a sharp sword. <laughs> so to whom, to whom shall we go? Yeah. Thou hast the, word, the words of everlasting life. That's, that's the same as this sharp two-edged sword. Mm-hmm. So as we, um, one other contrast here. You know, a sword in the wrong hands. Mm-hmm. Just think about it. It's dangerous, yeah. deadly, um, it's destructive, it's violent. The same, the same manner, but you put the that the same sword or knife, like give it to a surgeon. Uh-huh, yeah. That kind of the same, you know, the the same nature. Uh, just think about it, like the dag the dagger in the hands of a con, of a convict, and a scalpel in the hands of a heart surgeon. Both sharp, both cutting. But which which is more desirable? So in, out of his mouth, out of the master's mouth, it come it comes as with an operation. It comes with purpose and design and intent. It's not it's not just being, just being thrown wildly across the across the way. It's being wielded. It's being in conviction in the circumcision of the heart. Uh, It's the sharp. Two-edged sword. So let's uh, just think about these things as we come to this table. Father in heaven, we thank.